All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get going here, although I don't have uh, too many people join yet, and nobody's here um, at the face-to-face -face session. So, uh, but but um, um, hopefully I got some of my technical details worked out from the first help session, um, and uh, at least my recording's better this time, so I'll, I'll post this as usual. I've got a couple of things that I wanted to talk about, but, you know, I mean, I've had quite a few people... Uh, asking me on email um, to help get their dev box up, which is great. Uh, but you know, you guys ought to be using these help sessions as well to come and ask questions. Uh, let me know your status of your dev box, things like that. So, but also email me. I'm, I've also been setting up individual meetings with people uh, for Zoom. If, if you see this after the fact, um, but but yeah, most everybody hopefully should have their dev box up and running by this point and should be able to work on assignment one. So. That's where I want everybody to be at, basically. Um, all right, so I had two. Th I wanted to talk about assignment one, um, so I'm, I'm going to leave at least thirty minutes for that. So by ten o'clock. But before I talk about that, um, I wanted to give a few hints about uh, using uh, Git, especially using Git if you're working on a team with two or three, um, with one or two other students and yourself, so two or three people, right? So, you know, you, you do, there, there are some special burdens uh, for teams. So I'm requiring that all team members give evidence that they um, are giving roughly equal amounts of work. So that means that basically every team member has to roughly commit the same number uh, you know, you know, you have to break up your commits. Okay, so I've got a requirement for everybody, even if you're not on a team, even if you're doing the assignments by yourself, each one of those tasks has to have at least one commit. And, and each commit um, has to only be for work for one task. All right, so you can't have work for two or more tasks in a commit. And there has to be at least one commit for each task. Okay, so that that's kind of the industry standard for using Git. you want to have each commit have just one chunk of work, okay? And, and it ought to be a relatively small, um, you know, defined piece of thing, okay? So, so that means though that, that if you are working on with a group, you're gonna have to maybe worry about, you know, if team member A commits their work, then team member B needs to be able to get that work and build on it. And, and sometimes you can get what are known as conflicts or merge conflicts. So I, I just wanted to, to show how you deal with that real quickly. I mean, even if you're not working on a team, this is stuff you ought to know, and, and you can even working by yourself, uh, end up getting a conflict um, on your code. So let's review a couple of things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start up my, um, my dev box here. So I'm already in my repository directory, and as usual, I'm gonna do my bigger up to bring it up. Um, you know, uh, make certain that you, you don't see error messages, make certain that you look for that the port 8080 is being forwarded from your virtual machine to your local host, your local machine. Um, and uh, you might wanna check that your shared folders are being mounted. Um, so I think most people have gotten past that message where um, it said it couldn't mount the shared folders because of uh, the, the, the VBox FS. So uh, there was an announcement about a procedure that does seem to, you know, so I'm, I'm still not 100% certain why that happens, but I, but I think if you follow the steps on that announcement, that fixes that. So, so yeah, it should look something like this without error messages if it's coming up correctly. Uh, another thing that, that I found out somebody ran into a problem. Um, so you have to go to HTTP um, 127.0.0.1 colon 8080. So 8080 is the port number. Um, you can't go to HTTPS. So HTTPS uses secure shock socket layer to add some encryption. Uh, but the Visual Studio code is not being served on HTTPS. And if you just enter in 127.0.0.1, um, it might default to trying to look on HTTPS for you. So you might have to explicitly type in the HTTP, tell it, you know, I don't want encrypted HTTP, you know, I want plain non-encrypted HTTP um, to talk to your server there. Um, um, and I'm gonna re I'm gonna reaccept the assignment because I, I deleted it because I want to start from scratch here. I'm gonna accept the um, 
the um, so I get the right class or accept the assignment zero zero again here. So one of the first steps, um, I mean, you can't really read the, the, in, the instructions for the assignment to accept the assignment by going to that link um, in our um, um, MyLeo Online or D2L site. So, um, all right, but one, once you've got it accepted, it'll create a repository for you called assignment, whatever the assignment number is, and then your, your team name on there, right? So I already showed you all these steps before, um, although, um, yeah, there was also another um, announcement about the VS Code extension. Um, so, I mean, I, I did want to mention something about that here. Um, so make certain that you do have your project configured and you've got the, 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 the IntelliSense code extension correctly installed. Um, so that was this announcement um, on 31st, I guess, yesterday about class dev box setup. Um, the first one was about that problem with the, the, the mounting the shared folders. Uh, the second one is then, um, so the extension that I have for you um, is, probably, is probably not going to work. So you do need to do these steps. I'm going to just go ahead and do these, although I've already done these before. So you do need to first remove uh, the, uh, the file. So you need to do that by opening up a terminal. So this is a regular Linux terminal. Um, and, and you'll want to run that remove. Um, I've actually don't I don't have the file there, but but um, you want to run that remove command if you've got the .bsix file first to remove it. Um, so I, so I already have that. I must have removed it before. And then you want to um, do this. Th this is just downloading from the command line. There's no easy way to open up a browser and download this inside of your Visual Studio Code. Although I guess you could download this on the host system and then just put the file. Uh, into your shared folder. That'd be another way to do it. But but uh, here you can you can do it from the command line by running the um, running the wget. Forgot to copy that. So we'll see to copy paste it in there, and that should download it. And then then you should make certain that so, so this is the thing to get to your extensions. Uh, if you had one installed before, you know, go ahead and uninstall it. Um, and you can refresh the whole Visual Studio Code browser to, um, uh, to kind of restart Visual Studio Code. Um, and then install that version, what was it, 1.5.1 uh, that I told you to download. Um, So yeah, it should have been yeah, it should have been the version 1.5.1. The version 1.6 doesn't seem to be working. Um, I have to try that again, and I, the the most recent one should work. So I'm not certain why the 1.6, but I, I seem it seems that the 1.5.1 is okay. So once you have that downloaded, you can click the three dots here and install it from that file to install the the C++ IntelliSense. And once it's done installing, you should see it in your extensions that's installed. And if you click on that, you should see that the extension is enabled and stuff. So, um, oops. okay. So let me go ahead and uh, so, so really, you know, uh, we talked about this last time. These steps here, um, although yeah, we had to fix installing the in IntelliSense extension. Um, uh, I won't show again doing your SSH keys. I've already got that set, but you know you have to make certain that you've got your um, um, SSH key from Visual Studio Code. Um, so you find that in your .ssh directory in the file called the id ed25519.pub. And you have to copy and paste that to your GitHub repository account so that you can clone the repository. So, 
So from that, then, so these steps you won't have to do again um, once you do them just once. But um, for each assignment, then um, you're going to have to do these steps basically. So you have to clone the repository to your your uh, Visual Studio Code class dev box. So let's let's do that again. So I'm going to copy the URL that we want to clone. And when I'm using Visual Studio Code, I normally go to the, um, over here, this is the, the source control for do, doing stuff with Git. Um, and I do a clone repository. You can actually do this from the command line. You could, you could actually do say, change directory into the directory where you, where you want to clone it into. So if I wanted to clone it here, I could do a, a, a git clone. So the same thing that you did to clone our class dev box repository, um, you could clone it here from the command line. So, um, but basically when, you, when you're when you using the Visual Studio Code uh, GUI, you know, the Visual Studio Code IDE, it's basically running that same command, the, the git clone command. So it's asking for the URL when, when I say clone repository, um, that we want to clone. Make certain that uh, if I didn't mention it, you need to you need to be cloning the SSH URL when you're working on these assignments, so that you can push your your work to the repository. And then, um, if you want to be able to have this folder so you can see it on your host machine, you want to clone it into the sync assignment folder because that should be being shared. Um, with your repositories, uh, with your host machine. So, so the home vagrant sync on your local uh, dev box, on your, on your uh, virtual machine, your dev box is being shared with the, um, the directory on your host machine. All right, so I cloned it and I opened my repository. Um, And then from here, you know, so again, I'm repeating some stuff that we did last time, but um, after you clone your repository, make certain you configure the assignment. So again, you have to do this, these steps just once for each assignment. A after you clone the assignment, you configure it. So again, you need to do a terminal to do that. Uh, you, you, your uh, IntelliSense, even though you've got the uh, extension installed, so your things for like the automatic code formatting and um, detecting compilation errors uh, and things like that won't be working until you do do the configuration. The configuration sets up uh, the Visual Studio Code configuration. So you have to do the dot slash configure. Um, and um, that might do more than this. So, so the first time you do that, I'll have to download and compile some stuff, but you do have to do this for each assignment because basically what that does is um, that sets up your VS code, that VS code settings for the project. And that also sets up the CLang format, source code formatting stuff, okay? So you can always check then from the command line that um, your build system is working after you configure. So you can do make clean, make, and make tests, right? So you should see that it builds cleanly with no errors. And then usually the test, uh, when you first start an assignment, there'll either be no test or maybe there'll be a few tests, but but most of the tests will be uncom will be commented out and won't be running yet initially. So. Um, all right, so so back to, you know, to, uh, a few people have already completed the assignment 00. I've been giving back comments on assignment 00. Um, so I'm not going to really give it a grade for that, but you should do the assignment 00. Actually, actually, you probably need to start working on assignment 01 at this point um, to make certain that you get it completed. But um, for assignment 00, you know, that was, I gave feedback. To, to check out things, um, to, to warn you about stuff that might get points taken off um, if you don't correct it. So for one thing, you do need to have the, the, the class 
style formatting working. And if you, if you did the configure correctly, it, it should be working. So one way you can tell if it's working or not, um, like for example, when you first uncomment um, the, uh, the tests here, and comment the first set of tests here. Well, you may not notice it, but but the indentation isn't correct here. So so all code block levels need to be indented by two spaces, uh, and the curly braces shouldn't have any indentation here. But anyway, so so if the configuration is set correctly, if you do a save here, so Control S or a uh, a file um, save. Control S. Notice that it re-indented the code. So, you know, so I can tell that my my source code, uh, um, the, the, the class style guide is working. I mean, you can also explicitly uh, mess up some of your indentation. Some other things that are done, um, you know, so class style requires all curly braces to be on a line of their own, indented correctly for the the, the code level, so we don't use curly braces at the end of lines for opening curly braces. So again, if you've got your code formatting set up, if you do a save, control S, it should enforce that and notice it'll re-indent your code. Um, it will do some other things. So um, it'll enforce white space. So there should be white space before and after uh, binary operators. So if you do a save, it'll, it'll put the white space in there uh, around binary operators. And there's lots of other class style things that are defined for the code format. Okay? So I don't know, this, so the first time students you know, run across this in your code, you might think that this is just a small thing. But for example, when you're working with revision control systems like Git, having a common style defined that everybody uses reduces the amount of conflicts in the code between people that are working on the same code base and committing the code to the same place. So you don't wanna have conflicts just because of extraneous things because some people are putting their curly braces on the end of lines and other people are putting them, uh, reformatting them to be like here, right? So if, if people are doing different styles like that, you'll get lots of unnecessary conflict, merge conflicts, and, and you wanna avoid merge conflicts, okay? So that's one reason why you need to make certain that your your source code um, uh, formatting uh, and the class style guideline enforcement for the CLang formatter is running on your system. All right. Um, usually, like I usually like to use a dark theme nowadays. I'm going to change over to. Um, the default dark theme. I, I don't like these maps here as well. I don't find these useful. They just take up space for me. So I'm going to remove those. Uh, what is that uh, map? Um, mini map. Yeah. So I'm going to toggle that mini map. Get rid of those. So. Um, All right, so I've already done these, but make certain that you configured your, your Git with your username and password. You can check if you've got that configured from a terminal again. We're doing a git config dash list. So you should have your username set. Uh, of course, if you try and do a commit without having these set, it'll tell you that you don't have these, but so you can always do this if you do get that error message when you do try to do your first commit, go back and set your um, configure your. This should be actually just your real name, so Derek Harder, you know, or whatever your real name is, and then your email should be the same as what's on GitHub. Um, all right, and and then yeah, I need to. So um, um, let me just check that control that my keyboard bindings are working. So. As well, so Control Shift One um, should be doing a make clean. Control Shift Two should be doing a build. Um, so we're not building around now because I uncommented these, but I haven't defined these prime um, things. And Control Shift Three should be doing um, the trying to run the tests. Um, um,
All right, so I'm, I'm gonna show what happens when you get like a, a conflict here. So to do that, I need to have two people, um, two, two GitHub accounts working on this code base. So um, you're gonna see a little bit of how I normally do things from the command line here. So I'm gonna uh, use my, my normal development tools to um, clone that repository. Um, this is on my, my host machine here. So there, notice I just did the git clones in the command line. And I'll test that I can make clean and make, make tests. And um, so I'm actually running as my, my real GitHub account uh, here. So if I make changes here and commit them, they're going to get committed um, as Derek Harder on GitHub. Um, so let's, let's put in the, the stubs there. So on my host machine, let's go to there. And uh, let's open up the tests first here. I normally use Emacs for my editor, kind of for my IDE. So I'm just going to put in the stub here. Um, as this account and commit it. So let's add the um, Add the, uh, the 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 signature, the, the function prototype for the is prime, so it returns a boolean. Get the values input. And um, then we'll add in like a stub function. Like this returns true. All right. So if I build that, it should build now, which it did. Um, and the test should run, although you know they're not passing. So again, it passes the first ones for prime one, two, and three, but it's not passing for four, right? But oh, and so as another hint uh, or another kind of requirement, make certain that you always try and build your project before you make a commit and push a commit. You should never push a commit that's not building, okay? So so if you do do a make, um, it should be building before you do your commit. So I'll always check that it's, it's it's building correctly before you make a commit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna commit from the command line here. So so again, you'll see kind of this this stuff is being done for you in uh, Visual Studio Code. And I'm gonna show that in Visual Studio Code again here. But um, so at the moment, I've got the three files mo modified that I just um, uh, edited. So when you stage them, that's that's doing what's called a git add. So I want to stage these three files. And then I'll, I'll commit them to, to, to make my commit. Get in the habit of having good commit messages, okay? So don't just give me a single line. So at a minimum, you should have a title, there needs to be a blank space, and then a fuller description. So we added a sub function to make sure that the project is uh, compiling and able to run the tests uh, before we begin uh, actual development. All right, and again, I just committed that locally. So if I do a git push, um, 
And that's, that's what happens when you push the button down on the bottom of Visual Studio Code. That should push it to the GitHub repository, right? So let's check that out. So, so we, can, we can tell if, if we look at the actual GitHub repository, let me reload that here. So we should now see that there's four commits. Um, and, and we can see now that, that I, if I, if I look, so if I did that too quickly, uh, one way you can see the commits from the code page, um, there's a little thing that says commits. If you click on that, that'll show the actual history of the commits to the repository. So that was the commit that I just made here with my title. Um, and then click the three dots to get the full commit message. You can also look um, for these assignments on your pull request. Um, so everything you commit to main to the main branch should end up being shown on this pull request here. So, um, so if I'm working, you know, if 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 my teammate here pushed a commit and I want to continue working on from where they did. Um, if I haven't done anything yet in my repository, I can just do a git pull now and I'll get their changes. Okay. So, um, um, and, and you can kind of, so now in Visual Studio Code, back to Visual Studio Code, working as TMUC student, uh, you can see that, that it's showing um, one down. So that means that on the remote repository, there's one commit I'm what one commit behind from from the uh, the remote repository uh, that I need to pull down. If I, and if I look at my code, I've actually got a conflict because I started changing this code here, um, and I actually didn't want to do that. I'm going to throw away those changes. If if if, if you don't want to keep some changes, um, uh, you don't have to, to to stage them and keep them. You can, um, for example, discard the changes. By hitting the the kind of the arrow, the, the the redo there. So yeah, I have no local changes now. So um, um, there's not any possibility of a merge conflict happening. I can safely pull down the work that my teammate um, just pushed to the repository by by clicking the um, uh, the push pull button down here. Right. So as soon as I do do that, you see that I now see the changes that they made. Right. So. Um, and, and I'm now up to date with the repository. So I see that they uncommented these and there were no conflicts. So, so we don't see any conflicts being listed in here, right? Um, and, and I see the, um, the, the signature for the function here. And if we look in test primes, we can see the, um, or sorry, if we look in primes.cpp, we can see the, um, The, um, the stub function here, okay? So um, let's show an example then of a conflict now. So, so, I, so I need to wrap this up, it's, it's 10 o'clock. It's kind of when I wanted to get over to talk about assignment one here. But, but, but let me make a real quick, quick conflict. So let's say again, back as, um, as, as me here, that I start implementing this. So let's say, um, And I'll put some bugs in here on purpose. Another style thing that's not enforced by um, our Visual Studio Code style checker, but um, e even when it's not required, um, always put the curly braces. So here, it's not strictly required that I have curly bra braces around this code block. So if we do find a divisor, um, it's not true. It's false that the value is prime. Okay. Um, but always put in the, the curly braces. This, um, some people prefer this, I prefer this. Um, this. And this prevents certain kinds of bugs from happening sometimes. So. so let's let's try running that. So um, um, yeah, so I purposely, 
purposely had a bug in there, so it's not passing for, um, uh, it's actually not detecting any of the prime numbers, notice, so, so 19, 17, 13, 11, 2, 3. Okay. Anybody spot? I, I know I went pretty quickly by that. Anybody spot the, the bug there? I'll fix the bug here um, when I uh, when I show the conflict here. So. Um, but yeah, let's, let's push that change then. I only made changes to one file this time. So it's uh, not detecting prime numbers, uh, only non primes. All right, so now I've, I've pushed. Um, this, uh, so now if you go and look in your pull request, Again, anytime somebody pushes to your repository, you know, if you go and look at your pull request, you should see all these pull requests for the all these uh, commits that are pushed for the assignment being gathered into your pull request here. So I'm mainly going to be using the pull request to look over your work and evaluate it. Right? Um, and yeah, if we look at the details from running the tests on GitHub, uh, we'll see that they're not passing. Um, um, so when we test the is prime function, it's failing quite a few of the tests here. Um, failing ten of them. So. All right. So if um, if me as a team member, if I if I do some work now that conflicts with that uh, before pulling down their changes, uh, we're going to have some merge conflicts. Okay. So let, let's say that, that we weren't communicating very well, um, and both of us were working on implementing is prime. All right. So um, although the student here is going to be doing a little bit better. So um, So the bug I had before was I, I, I had the, the divisor go from two up to value, but that meant that my last test was testing whether value was divided divisible by value. So it was always failing because all numbers are divisible um, by themselves, uh, even prime numbers, right? So, so yeah, I mean, you know, if you have compilation, errors, um, you know, if your IntelliSense extension is correctly uh, installed, you should be getting your, uh, you know, these are called IntelliSense, you know, so you should be getting the indications of, of like uh, unknown variable names, things like that, with the, with the squiggle, the red squiggles. Um, We're testing all divisors from two to value minus one, and if we find a divisor, the answer is false, the value is not prime, right? So uh, also, I'll probably, you know, you should try and comment your code. Um, I mean, you don't have to comment every line, but I usually like to comment like at least code blocks, right? Um, um, so you'll probably get comments from me. Uh, you'll get the code review comments from me if, if you're not commenting enough. Um, so otherwise, no divisor was found. So the value is prime, right? All right. So let's let's build that and test it.
So I compiles and all my tests are passing now. So, all right. So let's let's say I go ahead then um, and try and commit these changes. So all tests are passing for this task with this commit. All right. So I'll make my commit. Now, of course, notice I've got one that I haven't pulled down yet, and I got one that I'm going to push up. So now, as soon as you do this, if you ever try and push something where the remote repository has uh, commits that you don't have, and if uh, it can't merge them, so if those commits, like they are here, uh, if they have conflicts, if they're on the same lines of code um, and Git does can't can't figure out which lines to keep or how to merge those safely, you'll get what's known as a merge conflict. So let's try and push these. So notice. Um, we still have the one one down here, um, and um, we didn't end up with no, you know, with no um, differences on our search control, right? Uh, and another way you can tell that there's merge conflicts is you'll get these. Um, uh, what are these technically called? So, so these indications of conflicts. So, so these are I can't remember what what people call these, but but these indicate where there's. Um, merge conflicts in the code. So you actually have to edit these. Uh, I mean, you know, if you if you try and compile this code, this this is not syntactically cor correct. So this co code won't compile and run if you leave those in there, right? If I compile, when it tries to compile um, primes.cpp, um, you know, that, that's a syntax error. That's not actual C++ code, right? So, so these are in here uh, telling you that, that you need to fix by hand uh, this conflict. Okay, so do, so do I want to keep, so the head was the stuff that, um, uh, that was the stuff that I committed, right? Um, and the incoming change, that was the commit that, that's, uh, that my teammate made that's, that's currently already pushed to the repository that I didn't pull down yet, okay? So in this case though, you know, um, not, not only do I, is my code better in this conflict, but they have a bug here by not going up to just value minus one. So we really want to remove what they did to resolve this conflict. Uh, and likewise, you know, so there was another one down here. You have to find all these here. I think Visual Studio Code uh, helps you find those. So, um, you know, anyway, I mean, uh, one thing you can do is you can look at the, the little colored indications on the side here to see um, where these things are in your code. And so. Uh, anyway, so let's, let's remove these. And again, okay, so I think I've, I've fixed all the, the, the conflicts, right? So, but, you know, always, always test it. So, so let's, you know, make certain that everything compiles before we go ahead and, and uh, fix the, the merge conflicts, okay? So yeah, it's actually compiling now, um, and we're running the test again. Okay, so now at this point, it, it, I'm ready to um, fix the merge conflict. So, so again, if I have merge changes, uh, they won't show up as changes; they'll show up as merge changes. But uh, I can do kind of a similar thing. So I can stage those, um, and then you can change the commit message, or you can just leave. I'm just going to go ahead and leave the commit message. So we're merging. Uh, the, the, the my local commit with that commit that was made to the remote repository here. So we'll do that, check that to, to merge, and then we're still not done. So now there's actually two uh, commits locally. So my first one and my merged one, and now I'm going to push these to the repository.
right? So now um, we'll see. So now notice it's the TMUC student has pushed some commits finally, and we have his two commits. So his initial commit to implement is prime, and then the second merge commit to, to merge the, the conflicts um, and just back up here. Right? So yeah, now if we look at the code, we should see uh, looking at the change files that only the 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 fixed merge conflicts are in there for the most recent um, commit for the implementation of this prime. Um, and um, if we look at the, um, the the tests, we should see now that when it tests is prime, that all the tests for is prime are passing now. All right, so that was a quick example of merge conflicts and stuff. So be aware of those, you know, especially pay attention, you know, down here to your indication of whether you've got stuff locally uh, and whether there's stuff remotely. I mean, communicate with your teammates if you're working on a team. You know, it, it's best uh, until you get used to um, working on a team uh, and having to handle merge conflicts, it's, it's best to try and avoid them. So I, I recommend for the first assignment or two that you completely work serially, okay? So even if you have multiple team members, uh, only have your first team member uh, complete task one and push it. And then that team member should then tell, you know, or, or work with the second team member who's gonna do task two. Uh, and then that team member should, should, you know, not do any work until task one is, is done and completed by the, the first team member. Uh, and then the second team member should pull it down and complete task one and then push their implementation to task two, right? Does that make sense? So, so it's best until you understand what you're doing to, to just serialize things. Later on, then once you're more comfortable using Git, uh, you can do stuff in parallel. And if you do get merged conflicts, uh, you'll be better able to understand what's going on and to successfully merge them and handle them um, if they do occur. All right, so I went a little bit longer than there. I've only got about 15 minutes. Uh, if anybody has any quick questions, let me know. Um, I haven't had too many people joining yet. So um, I'm, I'm not gonna be, um, I'm not gonna be going to the Science 355 lab um, unless I get people uh, telling me positively that they do want to do these face-to-face. -face. So our next lab next week, or sorry, our, our next um, help session next week, I'll probably be doing it from, uh, my home office, um, but I'm perfectly happy to, to, you know, if people need to see me face to face, I consider these as kind of my off, also my office hours. So just send me an email and let me know that you do need to come in uh, for some face to face contact. So, um, so let, let's get assignment one here. So I'm going to have to go through kind of quickly what the tasks are that you're supposed to be doing for assignment one. So I'm going to go ahead and um, accept the assignment. When I've got my assignment one, uh, you know, and as usual, um, um, there's, there's, there's always going to be a checklist for these assignments for the things you have to do for each assignment. So we've accepted it. We need to clone the repository now. So I'll copy the SSH. I'm going to go ahead and close this project off. So I'm done. Um, um, close this folder off. I'm, I'm done working on the practice assignment zero, zero. So we'll close that off. There we go. Um, and let's clone the repository again. Into my sync assignments. 
and open it up. So once you've cloned the repository locally, you have to do the configuration steps. So we'll open a terminal. So again, yeah, my intelligence. So I don't have the VS code, not VS code, and the um, the CLang format stuff configured correctly until I run configuration. So you'll get these messages if you don't have your intelligence configuration set up correctly yet. So if I if I've got uh, my assignment one open, if I open a terminal, it should open it into that directory. Um, so and that's where I need to be to run the configuration from. Make clean, make everything built with make, no errors there. Make tests. So again, we have no tests for the assignment one here, so no tests for running. Um, and then you should create the, the issues for task one and all the other tasks. Um, part of the check checklist here. So I'll go ahead and create all five of my issues here. So new issue, um, and we'll get the task one, submit it. New issue, task two, submit it. New issue, task three, submit it. And new issue, task four, Task five, finally. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add. So I'm going to start working on task one. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, associate a link uh, it, the, the task one issue with um, my pull request here. So. All right. So now we're pretty much ready to go. Um, although again, um, uh, uh, maybe another kind of confirmation step here. So let's let's further check that the IntelliSense and everything are working. So kind of as a first step uh, for, for for task one, um, you know, we want to uncomment the the test for task one, right? And then you know, again, if I save this file now, um, I should see that it re-indents everything um, if the um, source code code formatting is working, right? Uh, puts the curly braces on a line by their own and so on, right? So yeah, everything looks configured correctly now, all right? So, uh, and so now if I do control shift two, um, it won't be building because the first task is to write a function called sum of values, okay? So let me quickly talk about the task. So basically in this assignment, we're gonna be writing a, a couple of functions to do some statistics. So, so ultimately what we want to do is write some functions to, to calculate the, the mean and the standard deviation of an array of values, all right? But be, before we, um, well, um, task two is to actually write the function to calculate the mean of an array of values. But, uh, but we first write a function that we're gonna reuse in calculate mean, okay? So to calculate the, the, the mean uh, of a set of values, you have to take the sum of the values in the array. So this looks better if you look at the PDF here. So the, this, this uh, LaTeX format didn't get rendered here if you look at it in the readme. But, but basically if you take the sum of the values and then you divide that by n, um, that gives you the mean Right, so we're going to first write a function sum of values so that we can use that to calculate the mean. Here, right? So the sum of values takes two parameters, as is described in the assignment. So it takes an array as a second parameter. So notice we'll pass it in this array x, 
array X has uh, one value in it, the way I initialized it here. Um, um, but we're actually, for the first test, we're passing in that the array X has a size of zero, right? Uh, you can't actually initialize an array to have size zero, but you can, for the way that we're writing our functions, we can pass an array, but say that the array is actually empty, that there's no values, in which case the sum should be zero, all right? So let's write the stub um, to pass this first test, okay? Um, so the, the, the signature of this function that we have to put into the include file is that uh, we're returning a, um, a double result. Um, so, you know, maybe it's not completely obvious. You know, I, I probably described this in the assignment description, but, but we're actually returning a floating point number. Uh, you should use a double here for the return value, for return type. The name of the function is the sum of values, and we take two parameters, right? We take an integer, which is the size of the array, and we take an array of values, okay? So this is in the materials for this week, but um, yeah, I mean, you can pass arrays in uh, to functions, uh, which we're used to doing a lot of in this assignment. So that was part of the quiz and the readings for this week. So this is an example of passing in an array of integers, right? But we're also passing in the size. So let's add the um, So again, I gave you the function documentation for this assignment. Um, so this is the, the function documentation for the sum of values. So I should put it right there. So it should have exactly the same signature as we declared in the header file. Um, but um, instead of a semicolon at the end, we have curly braces because we're gonna have a body to implement the function. But we will start off by giving a stub to return zero so that should allow us to pass the first test, which is expecting if we give it an array that we say is empty with no values in it, that the sum of the value should be zero um, in that case. So let's build that. Um, so it didn't build, what did I do wrong here? But usually, if you have compilation errors, uh, you want to go to the very first error or, or maybe look at your problems. Um, so, um, Oh, um, so yeah, in this case, uh, we're passing in an array of doubles as, as rel. So I had the, had the type incorrect. So that's what this is telling me, that the parameter of type int um, is wrong in this case. I'm, I'm trying to pass in a parameter of type double. So yeah, so I meant that to be an array of doubles. There we go, see if that makes it happier. That's what I was expecting. So we built, um, let's try the tests. The tests run, but they're failing. So the first failing test is actually on line 45. Um, so it's actually passing this one on 39, uh, but yeah, it's failing this one. So here we're expecting if we pass an array with a one value, value three that the sum should be three right but we're returning zero all right but that's significant enough i might go ahead and commit that if i was actually working on this my own right at least to practice get some practice committing uh work to the repository and stuff right so um i'm not going to show you show you any more here but you know you have to finish off you have, you have to sum up these values in the array uh, and return the sum in order to get these tests to pass all right Um, 
All right, and then the second function uh, actually calculates the mean, okay? Now, you're, you're required um, to reuse that sum of values function, okay? So you could implement calculate mean by putting in the same kind of loop that you would do to sum up the values of the array, um, and then just divide by n, right? But, but, you, but if you do that, um, I'll take points off. So you, so you have to actually reuse the sum of values. So call the sum of values to get the sum of values of the array, right? Um, so I'll give you one more thing. So in this case, um, actually, if you look at task two, The uh, signature for the calculate mean is the same as the signature for the sum of the values, right? So giving you a little bit more of assignment one, the, the signature for your second one is the same. It's just we have a, a function with a different name. It takes the same two parameters, the size and array of doubles as inputs, and it returns a double result. But in this case, instead of returning the sum, it returns the, the mean or the average of the values in the array. So that's what task two is. And then the, 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 the last three tasks are working up to being able to calculate the standard deviation of an array of values, all right? So a way that you calculate the standard deviation, um, I should probably pull up the PDF here so I can um, look at it real quickly. Um, So if you want to, um, if you find your assignment repository, look in the doc subfolder, there should be uh, a rendered PDF uh, of the assignment, but that'll have the, uh, the mathematical notation rendered better, right? So the standard deviation is calculated by taking the sum of the differences between the mean. So X bar is the mean. So we're going to reuse the calculate mean function to first find the, the mean of the array of values. So the first thing you'll do for the calculate standard deviation is call your calculate mean to get, get the mean of the values. Um, and um, and then you're going to be reusing these other two functions. So the difference of values and the square of values are going to be reused in order to implement your calculate standard deviation. So th this assignment, uh, one of its goals is all about understanding writing functions and code reuse um, in, in programming. Okay. So the difference of values basically takes um, an array and the size of the array. So it looks similar to the, the previous two functions, but it takes a third parameter, which is a value that you're supposed to subtract from each of the values, okay? So that's what difference of value does. Um, and you can reuse the difference of values to do this part here. So you're gonna be calling the difference of values to calculate the difference between all of the values in the array and the mean value. When you do the calculate standard deviation, right? Um, and then the square of values is, is actually a little bit simpler than the difference of values. Maybe I should have made that task three instead of task four. It is okay to do these out of order if a task doesn't doesn't depend on a previous task. You usually probably should do them in order though. But yeah, in this case, you can actually implement task four uh, because it doesn't use task three or task two or task one. So. But this one um, basically takes the same two parameters as the first two functions. So it just takes an array and the size of the array, but it's going to square all the values in the array, right? Oh, and, but yeah, it doesn't return. So, so these two functions don't return uh, a result. So both of these functions are going to be void functions. They actually modify the values in the array that you pass in. So the difference of values subtracts a value from each value in the array. So, so it's actually modifying the input array. And the square of values function you know, is going to be a void function also, which I think I described here. Uh, but it actually modifies the array you pass in to actually square each value in the array, right? All 
All right. And then, you know, finally, there's the, the calculate standard deviation. So you should be reusing, you have to, you have to first call calculate mean to calculate the mean of the array of values. Uh, and then you're going to, you're not going to have any loops. So, so if you have a loop in your fifth task, your function for calculate standard deviation, you did something wrong. So uh, the second step you're going to do is calculate, is call the, uh, the, um, um, Call the, the difference of values to calculate the difference between each array value and the mean of the values in the array. Um, and then you're going to call the, um, the, 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 the square of values to square all of those differences. Right? And then again, you, you don't have a loop, but you have to sum up all those square differences. But to sum up those square differences, uh, you're going to reuse the, um, the the sum of values. So, so you're actually going to reuse the first function um, to do this final summation of all the square differences. All right? And then once you do that, you have to divide that by n and take the square root of that, and that is the standard deviation. All right, so I, I rushed that a little bit, but, but hopefully that, uh, that's enough to get you going on the assignment one if you haven't started with it already. Uh, yeah, so I do have to go ahead and end the session. Uh, if you have a quick question, let me know. But otherwise, you know, I'll be posting this video. Keep sending me your emails. Uh, keep asking questions on GitHub. The, the comments in your pull request, I, I will, I'll be checking those the next two days pretty regularly so I can answer uh, questions you have uh, using GitHub comments as well. All right. So with that, I'll go ahead and end the session. Uh, so good luck on the first assignment, and I'll see you guys later then.